Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My talk today is concerning the Merchant Marine. The Merchant Marine of World War II. I'd like to talk to you, my audience, directly about some things which have been largely ignored. Ignored by history, in the history books, in the teaching of history, and by the nation in general. That was the service of the merchant seamen during the war. Now, I began my career in the Merchant Marine during a summer vacation. I was 16 years old, and for years I had gone to the banks of the Hudson River, high on the cliffs above the river in New Jersey. And from there I could observe the ships coming in from sea and docking on the other side of the river. I saw the maiden voyage of the Queen Mary, witnessed the fireboats as they surrounded her and cascading huge streams of water to welcome the Queen Mary to New York. I saw the maiden voyage of the Normandy when the Normandy came up the river. And again, the fireboats met her, every ship that was in port, along, docked at piers along the river, blew their whistles in greeting. It was quite a thrilling time. During those years that I lived in New Jersey, they built the George Washington Bridge, they dug the Lincoln Tunnel, they built the Empire State, and it was a real busy time, but a wonderful time. And I had a yearning to work, to go to sea, to work on one of those ships. And finally, in my 16th year, between my junior and senior years of high school, I had a letter of introduction to the men or to the officers of the Standard Fruit and Steamship Company. And that letter of introduction got me a job on a banana boat. That's what we called them in those days. They hauled bananas from Central America and brought them back to New York. So here I was, a kid who literally knew nothing about the sea. Also, they decided to put me in the purses department. Now, the purses department means that you work with figures, you work with payrolls, you work with manifests for the ship, uh, you list the crew members, you pay the crew, you list the cargo, and you had to use a typewriter, and I'd never used one in my life. As a matter of fact, I'd never sat down in front of one. So we found out that a neighbor two doors down had a typewriter, and two days before I was to join the ship, I began hunting and pecking the, on the typewriter. Well, I went through the NMU, the National Maritime Union, through special arrangements, and I found myself on a ship. Our first port of call, Santiago, Cuba. 16 years old, it was quite an adventure. But there were many other young men during those days who were choosing that as an occupation. Most of them, of course, were a little bit older. But this was before the war. It was June, July, August, in the September of 1941. And by the time, when the time arrived that I was to return to high school, I decided I wanted to be a merchant seaman instead. But my father, with his usual wisdom, prevailed, and I went back to high school. 
It may have been a lucky thing because four months later, Pearl Harbor. My 17th birthday, I listened to Roosevelt's famous speech, a day that will live on in infamy. And with that, he declared war. That was December the 8th, 1941. Well, I turned 18 in 1942, or I was to turn 18 a year, uh, a year later, I should say. When I was 17 and graduated from high school, the war was on. Government regulations said that I couldn't return to sea, that I couldn't become a merchant seaman until I reached the age of 18. So I took a job working for the railroad and then another one where I worked in a welding shop owned by a black man and waited until I could go back to sea. When I was 18, I went down to the maritime base at Sheepshead Bay. And just about everyone around me was 18 years old. Here the war was on and we were all going to go to sea on a merchant ship. 18 year olds, 19 year olds, there were a few older, but at that time people who fought in the war and who supported the troops in the war, we were all kids. <clears throat> and as young kids, we were the ones that took the brunt of what was going on. So eventually I got my seaman certificate. And with that, I joined a Liberty ship. She had not yet been launched. That was to happen in a few days. So I went down for the launching. The name of the ship? The SS USO. She was named in honor of the USO troop I forget how many were that died, but they were on a Pan American clipper and it crashed in Lisbon Harbor. So that was the ship that I first went to sea on during the war. We left port and we headed for the Persian Gulf. You hear about the Persian Gulf today. Most people don't know that the U.S was in the Persian Gulf during World War II. That was one of the supply ports. That was one of the main ports that supported the war and helped to keep the Allies armed. In particular, our supplies were intended for the Russians. They had to truck those supplies that we delivered to a port in Iran called Karamshar or Koramshar they had to truck those supplies across Iran, across Afghanistan, and up into Russia. Those were the supplies, the planes, the guns, the tanks, the ammunition. Those were the supplies that helped to defeat the Germans. Now this tape is going to have to be done in segments. So I'll tell you more about our trips in later tapes. But let me say that we formed convoy in Norfolk, Virginia. We sat there at anchor for more than a week until the other ships could join us. And then we left Norfolk under escort with U.S. destroyers, U.S. Uh, Coast Guard ships to convoy us or take us across the North Atlantic, and the North Atlantic in wintertime is something to experience. See you again. Thanks.